Good morning students. Hope all of you are doing good. This is Zakia from DHSS presenting today's English poem Unit 2 Our Kajirina Tree by Toru Dutt. Before we could begin the poem, I would like to ask you a few questions. Have you enjoyed your childhood days? Yes, obviously, all of you have enjoyed, isn't it? Talking about the childhood obvious requires looking into the past. We all enjoyed our childhood days. Like spending our days running around, playing in the dust, playing hide and seek. Have you enjoyed? You must have played hide and seek, isn't it? So memories are really valuable for everyone. Our memories inspire us to live and keep us motivated. So in this poem, we see the poet gives us the objective description of the tree and the charm associated with poet's childhood. That is what the poem is related, our Kajirina tree. The poet has spent her childhood days with her siblings under the tree. Now let us talk about the poet, Toru Dutt. Dorudat was a Bengali poet, poetess. She loved the land of her birth and remained thoroughly Indian in her consciousness and sensibility. She wrote poems and literary works in English and French. Her family was a family of distinguished intellectuals and poets. Dorudat had the privilege of being taught by excellent tutors at home and later on the long stay in Europe and England. A well-known collection of poems with the title Ancient Ballet and Legends of Hindustan and a volume of poems in French entitled Sheaf Gleamed in French Field. The most well-known poem of Torudat is Our Kajarina Tree. He immortalized the happy moments by recalling the memory of the tree. So in this poem, Torudat sings glories of the Kajirina tree and describes it in detail. The tree is just a medium to link the poet's past with the present. The poet remembers the tree because of many happy memories of the childhood days. She loves the tree greatly, but lost in the memories of her siblings who are now no more. They are dead almost. She hopes that the tree will be remembered forever. And she immortalized by Wordsworth are still remembered like you trees of borrowed rule. So now let us go into the poem. In the first stanza, you see, the poem depicts the Kajirina tree trailed by a creeper vine like a huge python. Let me read the lines now. Like a huge python winding round and round, the rugged trunk intended deep with scars, up to the very summit near the stars, a creeper climbs in whose embrace is bound, no other tree could live. So as I told you, in the first part of the poem, the poet depicts the Kajirina tree trailed by the creeper, winds like a huge python, winding round the rough trunk and sunken deep with scars. So it reached to the height of touching the very summit of stars. But gallantly the giant weighs the scarf and flowers are hung in crimson clusters, all the bows among, whereon all the days are gathered bird and bee. So in these lines, it is understood that the tree is wearing the scarf of creeper hung with the crimson cluster, the red clusters of flowers, accompanied by the birds and the swarms of bees humming around. That is what denoted in these lines.
and at night the garden overflows with a sweet song that seems to have no close sung darkly from our tree while men repose so in these lines she says that the garden is echoed and seems to be jubilant and the song of nightingale has no end it continues till dawn while men take rest so here we find the stanzas are very imaginative and description of the casuarina tree when first my casement is wide open to at dawn my eyes delighted on rest sometimes and most in winter on the crest a gray baboon sits like a statue watching the sunrise while on bow low bows his puny offerings leap about and play so what she tells here is in the second stanza is a replete with the pictorial and visual imaginary of the tree the gray baboon gray baboon is a monkey with his offspring with a little little one used to leap about and play gradually the sun rises and the coquillas begin to greet the day with their saws with their songs i'm sorry and sleepy cows on their way to the pasture so all this she is watching through her casement through her window when she opens the window during the winter season she watches all this so all this is visionary imaginary she is thinking all these past in the third stanza torudat establish that it is neither the stateliness of the tree nor in external beauty that endears to her she write but not because of it magnificent dear is the casuarina tree to her soul the beauty of the tree is no more than added gift its actual importance lies in the fact that it is part of duck's existence a remembrance of family tie lies of the warmth shared by the three siblings so you she used to play with the three siblings isn't it the brothers and sisters so all this is she is bringing forth blent with your images it shall arise in memory till the hot tears blind my eyes what is that dirge like murmur that i hear like the sea breaking on shingle beach it is the tree's lament on eerie speech that happily to the unknown land may reach so in these lines the tree is the only bond between the poet's past and present the poet says that she hears a mournful murmur and it is like the sea waves breaking on the rocky beach shingle beach is a rocky beach she is certain that the tree laments which may even reach to the unknown land that is what she means here unknown yet well known to the eye of faith ah i have heard that a whale far far away in distant land by many a sheltered bay when slumbered in this cave the water rat and the waves gently kiss the classic shore of france or italy beneath the moon when the earth lay trance in the dreamless swoon so this is highly philosophical she believes that the nature communicates with the human being even when living far away in a distant land she could hear the wail of the casuarina tree she has heard the music of nature when the waves gently kiss the shore of france or italy that is what she is telling here and every time the music grows before mine inner vision rose a form sublime thy form o tree has my happy pride i saw thee in my own loved native clime so whenever the poet hears the music of the nature a noble form rises from the inner vision it is a tree so dear to her which revives her spirit because it is a tree that she, she has been happy when she was her during her childhood with the, she used to enjoy with her beloved in the native land that is what she is telling here therefore i fain would consecrate a hay unto thy honor tree beloved of those who now is blessed sleep 
for a repose dearer than life to me alas were there therefore i fail in these line the poet wishes to dedicate the poem to the honor of the kajrina tree she is actually in a deep anguish she says that they were so dearer to her than her life her siblings were so dearer the tree was so dearer the tree was loved immensely by her siblings though they were blessed though they are dead now no they are no more with deep anguish she says that they were dearer to her than her life mayst thou be numbered when my days are done with deathless trees like those in borodale under whose awful branches lingered pain fear trembling hope and death the skeleton and the time the shadow and thou weak the worst that would the, that would thy beauty fail o fain rehearse may love defend thee from oblivion's curse so in these lines the poet says that she looks forward to her death but the wishes of the kajina tree before she could die the tree should be numbered among the deathless trees like you tree of borrowed rain so she immortalized by the greatest nature poet william wordsworth the poet here alludes to poems wordsworth poem you trees she believes that the negative forces of life like fear trembling hope death the skeleton all these poems can overcome with the power of love but what she means here is in this kajrina tree though the poem that she write become weak the beauty of the tree will please generation of people for certain so what she is telling here is though she pass away she dies the tree will be immortalized the tree will cherish that is what she is telling here is definitely one of the triumph of immortality over the death she expresses a wish that the tree should be remembered out of love and not because it cannot be forgotten that clear